621. You know, Michigan employers cannot fill openings many times is because people simply can't pass drug tests, especially in industries like retail and uh, food service. And, uh, well, the question is, well, what's, what are we to do? Some employers are actually trying to bypass drug testing. Jim Whitten with us. He's a workplace expert. He's a speaker and trainer. He's been hired by companies across the country to help them attract and keep the best and brightest candidates. He's the author of the book, The Old School Advantage, Timeless Tools for Every Generation. Jim, great to have you on WILS. Yeah, hi, Michael. Good to be with you again. Yeah, this, uh, now what do you, I mean, nowadays too with medical marijuana, and of course marijuana is becoming legal, what's your position on, on this drug testing? Well, you know, they've got to do it. Safety uh, concerns, particularly in manufacturing and agriculture. I mean, you just can't not test. Uh, so that's really not an option. And, and then, you know, motivation. I mean, I think a lot of folks that are, uh, you know, using the drugs, it, it's a sad situation. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of them have done it because of pain medication, uh, et cetera. But, uh, you know, training and motivation are taken away with, with this problem. So, Yeah, there's no question Uh, it's an issue. And, you know, ironically, um, the ACA, the uh, Obamacare is what a lot of people call it, of course, covered more people, especially in the Midwest, which gave them more access to medications that are being abused. And not only that, but Medicare doctors are being uh, graded by the patients now. That is also part of the uh, ACA. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there are many things that are contributing to this. But as an employer, you really have to test. Right. But maybe you, there's a. You're, you're talking about jobs where there could be a danger. What about white collar jobs, though, where that's not as much of an issue, especially with the proliferation of of marijuana? And here in Michigan, we have medical marijuana. Uh, right. Is that something that you, you really feel should disqualify somebody from a job? Well, you know, that's the that's the legal debate that is going to be decided because uh, I want to say there's seven, maybe seven to 11 states that have approved uh, not just medical marijuana, but recreational marijuana. I think by February it goes into effect mm-hmm. uh, and the courts are going to have to decide, you know, when you test somebody for marijuana and they're positive, but it's an illegal drug in that state. What do you do? Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is really the big question mark that's kind of hanging out there for employers and workers alike. Because marijuana, marijuana advocates say, look, look about the, the alcohol use. I mean, we, we don't make a big thing out of that. People may go home and drink, and we're not targeting them. Do you, in your view, is it all the same, or is there a difference in these substances? Well, I don't think that, no, I don't by any means think it's the same. I think uh, marijuana is, you know, the facts are that it's, there's a five-fold increase in the risk of heart attack in the first hour after you smoke marijuana. So if you've already got a stressful job, uh, you know, imagine that situation. I mean, THC levels are are maybe 20 percent higher than they were, you know, back in the 60s and 70s when, you know, marijuana became popular. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's uh, a lot more carcinogens in, in marijuana. So I, I think if you just look at the facts and put it up against alcohol, in my opinion, there's no question that marijuana is a more serious drug and it can lead to other even more serious drugs. So. Yeah. Uh, and it's, yeah, not, it's, it's a tough thing because you've got these people that they, they meet, need a job, they want to get out there, yet they're, they have an addiction issue, so they're essentially disqualified from really even attempting to get a job, right? Well, and that's true. And you know what? Maybe the silver lining is this. Maybe there'll be more apprenticeships for people that don't have experience, that are not testing positive. In other words, those that are testing positive for drugs right now, until they can get help, uh, especially with the opioids. Uh, until they can get help, it may provide some opportunities for some inexperienced or those entering the workforce to, to you know, enter into some of those jobs. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's just a very difficult thing. I feel bad for those, especially those folks that have been on opioids. I mean, I think even the president's advisors are talking to him about uh, naming it a national crisis so they can get some federal dollars uh, to help solve that issue. But yeah. uh, no question, it, it's a big issue for employers, and it, it will be interesting to see what the courts do with uh, the marijuana thing. Jim Whitten with us, workplace expert. He's, uh, his book is The Old School Advantage. You can find him actually at theoldschooladvantage.com. And uh, you talk about motivation, right? The, the marijuana may affect motivation. Now, do you think when you're bringing someone into a company, can you sense that? right away someone's level of, of drive? You know, I'm, I'm not an expert in that uh, as far as that goes in terms of, you know, can you look at somebody and tell that there's a problem? But, uh, I mean, you know, this is a generation. I have four millennials of my own, two daughters and two sons, 
And as parents, we want to motivate them to do well and to achieve. And, you know, we just don't want outside influences that are going to mute that Mm -hmm. motivation, uh, having to fight against that as well. And so employers likely feel the same way, that they want motivated employees. And, you know, the Mm -hmm. facts are this drug, THC, does uh, create some problems in in the areas of the brain that motivate us. Yeah. Now, I'm curious, when you look at people that are really truly motivated, how much of it is just internal versus something a company or a boss can really instill in somebody? Oh, wow. (laughs) That's another another topic altogether. But I I think the employer can have a great deal to do uh, with motivation. But to your point, if there's not a foundation, uh, in other words, if there's not something in, you know, their gut, as an old coach might say, Mm -hmm. uh, then it's going to be difficult to build on that. But I think employers can do a lot for motivation. We, We help them do that all, you know, all the time. Yeah, it goes beyond just. Uh, is money a good motivator in general, in your view? Or? Uh, it's a good short-term motivator. Uh, studies have shown that once you reach a certain level, uh, right now I think in our economy it's about seventy-five thousand dollars. Research uh, research has shown that beyond that, the return on the joy that comes from making more money uh, is offset to a large degree by the responsibilities that are associated with the higher wages. So hmm. happiness then begins to go down once you reach a certain level. Uh, and that's you know, somewhere around 75000 to 100000 in, in the current economy. And the nature is once you get up over into six figures, the jobs just become more stressful and more draining? Yeah, you've got a you know, pretty nice house, a, a good car to drive. You can go on vacation you know, once a year, maybe twice a year. Uh-huh. And then beyond that, the trade-off uh, begins to you know, not be worth it in many people's minds. Now, there are exceptions to that, of course, but generally that's what, that's what it shows. Okay. So beyond that, so if you're motivating, motivating somebody beyond that, is it just a matter of giving them more freedom and more control over their work? Is that it? You know, there is some of that, uh, but I I think the most important thing, especially for the millennial generation, and I think even more for Generation Z that's going to start working in about four years from now, is being part of something that is bigger than yourself. That that is a huge motivator. So that's why I say that employers can help in that if they'll rally the troops and say, this is our mission, this is what we're doing, and it's bigger than any one of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really what this younger generation wants to see, and, and that's encouraging to me as a baby boomer hmm. uh, to see that that does motivate them. Now, do, you, do you think they're they're unique in that way, or were, were the Generation X baby boomers, or were we all the same way too? Now, uh, you know, they're different. I don't think they're unique, meaning that you know it's uh, characteristic only to their generation. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's different, and it's refreshing because I think my generation is a boomer. Uh, was certainly motivated after, you know, it came from World War II, World War II products. He had the greatest generation. Uh, but I'm encouraged that this generation truly does. That, that's what I see consistently over and over again in millennial workers. Yeah. And again, I suspect I'll see the same thing in Gen Z, maybe even more so, hmm. that they want to be part of something that's bigger than them. And I think it's also part just of the human condition. Right. That's what we all want, you know. It's Jim Whedon, Jim, Jim Whedon, I should say, workplace expert. Find him at theoldschooladvantage.com. That's the name of his book, by the way, The Old School Advantage. Uh, Jim, great to have you on WILS. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Take care.